Okay, welcome to lab four. Uh, this is the lab where in normal times we would have put together everything we've learned so far to make a pretty good calibration of our microcontroller. And this is the lab where we're most going to miss the fact that you at home don't have an accurate multimeter and you don't have an oscilloscope to be able to assess what's going on. So in this lab, we're going to try to recreate that experience as best we can. I had started out thinking we might be just handing you a set of data and saying, here's how it works. I've managed to write some software that sort of replicates the experience of using a scope and a multimeter without the level of accuracy we can get with those devices. But it should give you something that feels a little more hands on. So what I want to do is walk you through that process this morning on the way to seeing what's going on with uh, uh, your microcontroller and s at least simulating the kinds of test measurements you do when you first got a new microcontroller to see, is it working? How accurate is it? How well can I get data with it? Because although these ones you're working with work quite well, there are some other microcontrollers where the analog uh, input range is not as linear, not as well behaved, and needs to be calibrated much more uh, thoroughly. So let's start. The first thing we're going to look at is checking voltages with the scope. Now normally you'd hook up some of the pins on your, uh, on your microcontroller to an oscilloscope and then look on the oscilloscope at how those voltages were changing with time. What we're going to be doing is we'll use the scope software that I've written to see what that looks like on the serial plotter. So let me go out here and there's the scope to serial plotter software. If you were looking for it, you'd find it uh, under wherever you've stored away your copy of the notes. So mine's under 217. And you'll notice I've got an old copy here and I've just downloaded a fresh copy. That's because some of the code has changed. So it may help you to catch up and find things you're looking for rather than having to go out to GitHub to get the latest version on each one. So if I go in here and look under Arduino code in the learning sequence for the SAMD, there's the multimeter that we've used before. And here right before it is the scope to serial plotter software. And that's the, the, um, that's the sketch that I've got open right here. So I've just opened it as is. And if I run it, it'll go through, I hope, do the compile and upload process just the way it should. It uploads, it's done uploading. It says, oh, I've now got the same problem a bunch of people have with an invalid library in my libraries folder. It's still compiled okay, it still worked. It's just letting me know this white is just a warning. It's not an error. So let's go and have a look at what's coming out on the serial plotter. And what we see is some green lines and some purple lines. And uh, those are signals that are coming from pins A1 and A2 on our microcontroller. So if we have a look at the microcontroller here, Right now, pins A1 and A2 aren't attached to anything. So as a result, what we're seeing is just the noise that comes from the measurement system if there's no signal present. And it's just picking up random charge. And you can see we've got uh, oscillations here that are going up and down about 80 to 100 millivolts peak to peak. So quite noisy but it's gonna get worse. If I wanna look at what's happening on pin A2, I can plug this lead in to pin A2. You'll notice that now pin A2 has got way bigger noise on it. It's uh, getting up almost to a volt. Now what the heck happened there? All I did was plug in a wire. That wire acts like an antenna. It's picking up all of the random electrical noise that's circulating around here. I've got about eight different things on my desk that are consuming AC power, including a couple of computers. 
And if you look up here, you'll see that the grid spacing for this red and blue grid is 100 milliseconds. So that's a tenth of a second. It's really easy for me to imagine, and I could count them, that those peaks are going up and down about six times in each step there. That would be the 60 hertz AC variation that's in the air all around us all the time. So how do I solve that? Well, part of the way to deal with that is to actually impose a signal on pin A2 rather than just letting it pick up noise. Plug it into ground. And suddenly, the noise has gone away. I've actually got a signal on there, and the values I've got are, are fairly small. Now this oscilloscope, this is essentially an AC coupled oscilloscope. What it's doing is it's smoothing off all of the constant parts and just keeping the time varying parts by and large. So as a result, what you're seeing is just the, just the noise on the signal. And that purple one uh, from, from pin two is down to, looks like some small fraction of a, a, a hundred millivolts, maybe, maybe maximum 10 millivolts. And you can examine that uh, in your lab. Now to make the scale work out, I'd have to also make sure that pin one was coming down to a reasonable level. So I'll ground pin one, and now they're both pretty small. It takes a while for the smoothing to bring it in so that the uh, green and the purple are close to each other. But once that uh, scrolls off the screen, we should see both of those are very close to zero, so only about plus minus five millivolts. Now we can go and measure things on other parts of our board. So what does the power look like? Oops, plug that into plus three. I got a little noise on there. But it looks like that power signal is really pretty smooth. So that's the scope software. You're gonna use that to examine a bunch of uh, different locations on your board. And if you wanna take some data and, uh, and go plot it in, in more detail, then what you can do is get out of the serial plotter mode and go and just display the output data here. So the main thing that's going on there is you've got these values here for uh, the uh, A1, A1 smooth, and A2, A2 smooth, again in millivolts. So you can use that to check just about anything on here. Let's try the uh, photo cell. I need to work that in there. There's the photocell data. And you see on the photocell, we've got a fair bit more noise, depending on how I've attached it. So we've got looking like something in the range of 10 millivolts of noise, depending on where, where we're measuring. So if I go to serial plotter, Now we're seeing the purple is the photocell output, and that's just the noise on that photocell output. So this is the kind of thing you could examine with an oscilloscope. The big advantage of having a real oscilloscope is it would allow you to look at that time varying data in much more detail at much shorter time steps. And one of the things that you'd see is that most of that noise is happening at radio frequency levels. Uh, once you connect it in very fast, the switching frequencies that are associated with the little computer components on your microcontroller. So essentially that's random noise. It, every time you make a measurement, you're getting something different. So let's get out of the serial plotter one and we will go to 
Uh, the next task on the list is to do a two-point calibration. Normally you would do this with a multimeter, but we're going to do it with basically faking out a multimeter. This L4 Cal Sim calibration simulator uh, is in the, uh, the starters folder. And if I find it, there's the starting code. I run that. Compiles, uploads, tells me I've got an invalid library. And if I look at the output, I'm getting nothing to start with. If I push the push button, let's see what I've got here. I've got a timestamp, a multimeter reading, and then a bunch of data readings that went along with that multimeter reading. If I, whoops, the part I should have done first, I'll take these leads out. I'm going to put this potentiometer back into pins A0 through A2 so that I can make adjustments. I think that's right. No, maybe one more further over. There we go. So now I'm going to press the button again. And I see that I've got about two volts. I've got about 38. And if I adjust the potentiometer a little and then press the button again, I've got a different voltage. So with this potentiometer plugged in, you can change the voltage that's showing up on pin A1. So right in here, uh, this is the potentiometer and it's controlling what voltage we have on pin A1. This code over here for the calibration simulator, it does a bunch of setup, but what it's doing in the loop is really simple. Uh, if the button's pushed, it does an analog read. It does a little messing around to fake up a voltage that would have come from a multimeter and prints that voltage out. Then it goes through and it prints out 20 more values of analog read from pin A1. So this stuff up here is giving us a simulation of a multimeter with uh, a little bit of noise on it. And this is giving us uh, some actual data values we can use to do our calibration. The next video will go through the process of actually doing a two-point calibration and assessing the data for its quality.